In three, two. Am I always going to be doing the intros on these things? Okay, I'll do the intro. <laughs> In three, two. Welcome back to the Bottle Rocket Gaming Server. I am ADDF Toxic, and I and I'm here today with the original jester, Mr. Warp Jester. Hi. Nice bow tie you got there. Oh, thank you. No problem. So how's life, my friend? Um, life is amazing. Oh, that's a good thing. What do you think of the water fountain? It's nice and bow tie. <laughs> I, I tell you, man. I, did. <laughs> I, I, I seem to have a thing about bow ties all of a sudden. I, I'm not really sure how that happened, but. Uh... Yeah, so it ties go. the data together. It ties the data. It ties the data together. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was the, I, I figured if we need to have something a little more stylish for the opening to the, our wonderful data center, so there we yeah. are. But now we're gonna actually be adding even more to the uh, little plaza area, aren't we? Mm-hmm. We're on here, here. So you, you, we have a hole. We do have a hole. Another hole. With tracks. Another hole, yes, with tracks, and is currently blocked by this massive mess of, uh, of railcraft. Yeah, this needs to go away. <laughs> badly. This needs to go away really badly. Um, you want to explain this, because... <laughs> um, you just cut out. What am I explaining? Uh, what this mess is. Um, this mess right here... Yes. It does something about watching all these four, five, something, too many track, uh, so that trains don't crash into each other when they're entering sludge, or exiting the sludge line. Yeah, I just put on my trackman goggles just so I can show oh, yeah. the uh, the pepper of how everything links together to That's talk to mess. each other. So this, this little intersection we have here, um, yeah. <laughs> For any of you who have actually played the real craft. You're going to probably snicker. For everybody else, they're going to probably scratch their heads and go, what the? <laughs> <laughs> all this stuff talks to each other to check all the rails to make sure trains basically don't turn into each other and cause large explosions. Um, so, yay! <laughs> <laughs> this is... I love Railcraft. I love these little boxes. They're really cool. Uh, we are so getting rid of this mess now. So getting rid of this mess. And how are we getting rid of this mess, Tox? We are... Replacing this mess with a roundaboot. Yay for roundaboots! Yay! <laughs> we, we we did actually show you guys uh, the roundabout we uh, set up over by bees. We also did one by forestry, or sorry, the interlink in the rail yard between forestry and bees, or basically the south line and the west line. And my guys have seen a little uh, sneak of that. So um, that one that one's a little more refined. I, I added a little extra zest to it by putting uh, some lights up so you can see the lights turn green or red and all that. Um, <laughs> but this is this is long overdue. Um, these intersections don't work reliably. We've had problems with trains getting caught on them constantly, and it's just all in out just a real pain. So. We're going to yeah. get rid of all this mess. We're going to consolidate it down to a redneck controller, redneck controller system, and we're going to kind of go from there. So, to begin with, the first thing you we're going to do... You are majorly cutting out again. Oh, no. <laughs> I dislike I heard this so no. much. Well, that's a good thing. I'm glad. Yeah. I am, I, for, all, for all you people in, in Toxland, I am very, very sorry. I have... Uh, I, need, I, need, I need to make things better. One second. Wait, is that copyright? I'm I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> I've turned my sensitivity up on my uh, my chitty chat here a little bit, so hopefully it'll be a little more reliable for you. All right. I, 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 all right. <clears throat> so as I said, we're gonna go ahead and do the red boot, and uh, just give you guys a little um, uh, understanding. The roundabouts are set up. Basically, you see we've got the rails coming up. Right here, out of the uh, data center. This, this is actually um, the new entrance to the parkade. So we're moving the parkade entrance over a little bit. Uh, part of it's for symmetry. If you look down here, we've got basically these tracks in line with the exit line right here. And they happen to line up really nicely in this wall here next to the pillars. And we're also having maybe something else there later. Um, but it's just it's symmetric, which makes my OCD very happy. 
And <laughs> mine too. And then we'll have it coming across the other side here. We're going to basically just move the rails over for the sludge line. Just a couple of a uh, couple of rails. So in here that we're going to we can use the same round boot. Exactly. And that way is one run round boot to make them all one round boot to rule them all. <laughs> or at least two. <laughs> Well, and yes. if somebody does not need to go into the data center or to sledge, they will loop around, we'll head right back on out, just leave right back out. It, which will work out again. very well because there's some stuff up here we'll talk about in a minute. So roundabout one right here. Roundabouts are basically a five by five. They're uh, it's got one track on the corner here and around, and then the actual sensing area we're going to have the red net tied to is going to basically run eight tracks out. So it sense when trains are coming in, when trains are exiting. So yeah. what we're, we're going to do first is we're going to need to cut safety the trains first. off. Safe, safety third. Come on, talks. So we have trains coming in here. We're going to go ahead and uh, flip the lever. Row. Hello. Hi. Hey. hey. Uh, half fill. Maybe he's actually keeping up now. So we're going to yeah. click, click we're that uh, lever there. Now, talks. do you want to talk about the second roundabout? Uh, the second roundabout that we're planning on putting in town is going to replace uh, this intersection that the sludge is uh, currently going over. Um, this leads into the power um, pickup area, and currently we have it um, exiting on this side, so that is going to take a little bit more work to uh, convert that into a roundabout. Um, for the record, I don't normally say about in, uh, in that quite that uh, Canadian of an accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's just something I kind of up after a little joke with the uh, with the original roundabout project. We, 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 we like to banter back and forth about the Canadianness or the, the lack of Canadianness of uh, talks. Yes. Roar too. We 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 have the misconception that Canadians are somehow prim, proper and polite and these two swear like sailors half the time. Rurik was pretty good, though, I will admit. Rurik is pretty bad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, so this will be the new entrance to our power um, station and pickup area. Uh, the trains will come in. There will be a little roundabout here. And the trains will come in here uh, to pick up their power and also leave through here and exit that way. So now, these two it. tracks on the other side, mm -hmm. this is going to be our new... Um, passenger station uh, for trains. So if somebody needs to catch a ride to to one of the towns, say mining town or forestry town, they'll be able to come up here, buy a ticket, and jump in just a normal cart. Basically, it's going to be a brat hub. Ride a train. A what hub? A rat hub? Brat. B R A T. Oh, brat hub. Okay. The Baller Rocket oh, yeah, Area right. Transit. That's right. <laughs> As coined by, uh, I believe, uh, Argentum. Thought yeah. that one up. It's around, for, for, for all of you people abroad, uh, in my area, I actually live out in the uh, West Coast, uh, um, mid California. I actually uh, live near the Bay Area. And the Bay Area has a, uh, a transit system called BART. So oh, yeah. Argentum had a little fun calling it the uh, BRAT system. Yeah, so we'll have, our, we'll have our Brat station there. We'll have the power coming off here, so that'll be one roundabout. And then we'll have uh, uh, this one here for sludge and for uh, uh, items. And again, this will be basically the end of the line, so the thing will loop right here and then send trains back out. So this is going to be important because when trains come out, for example, out of uh, the Brat station, they're going to first uh, be run down this way if we want to. So those kind of loop and then take off back up, or we can make them actually cut around up there. But for the most part, it's a pretty easy system. It's uh, we've, we've got it pretty much already fleshed out and running, so it's just a real quick process. So we're going to, in this case, we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to dig this out uh, two blocks down, because we're now doing a new system of hiding these uh, controllers and whatnot underground, since it can actually uh, sense the tracks from one block above. So we'll get this. Uh, go ahead and get this dug out, and then we'll bring it back and show you what we've done so far, and we'll start laying down the important bits. All right. Be right back. Yeah, finish this out here, and we're done. Talks, you ready? I'm ready. 
All right, dude. Oh, hey, hello. Yeah, I'm right behind you. <laughs> All right, I so we have... see this cluster fairy. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm saving that one for last. So just so you guys see, we've uh, dug out the uh, area for the roundabout. Again, we're going to be burying the receivers in the ground under um, the surface road, as well as we've dug the lines out here. Now, since we're already doing this roundabout here and the one down here that Tox is working on, we figured we'd go ahead and put proper road bed in. Um, for it, and since we had this little short jaunt between us, we just go ahead and tear everything up and put a proper road bed in. So we're using the uh, brownstone uh, from Tinker's Construct. Gives you a little speed boost when you're running on it, and it just looks a lot nicer. So we got all and that dug out. And the rest of the out. town's in it already. Exactly. <laughs> and we've got things kind of dug out here. Again, we've got the 5x5 the five five area for roundabout, and we've got these areas here dug out. Now, we've dug this out a little bit deeper because what we've decided to do from now on is we're going to go ahead and put in a special block um, for putting all of our receivers on top of. That way, if we're digging underground and we see one of these blocks, we know not to pop that block because if you do, receivers have to rest on a solid block. So if you lose that block, they pop, and then you have to reset the whole system and it just causes problems so um we're gonna go ahead and start getting this stuff pulled in you want to go ahead and grab the blocks and whatnot there talks sure first thing i gotta figure out how to uh, operate my jetpack <laughs> that's why there's a <laughs> <laughs> Hooray! We're building new roundabouts! <laughs> well, I'm guessing this is the reaction for the candidate, I think. Uh, you know, I would just want to have something a little more festive. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're going to grab uh, some relays here. As oh, yeah. Well as uh, where some, are the relays? Some red... Uh, are you grabbing half of this? I grabbed half the relays. Okay. And receivers... We need uh, those? We I can't remember. Don't need receivers at the moment. I'm grabbing the relays and the red net right now. Okay. That's I what we're going like to lay down next here. And of course room. your... Uh... Controller. So for for the uh, base blocks we're talking about, we're using the futuristic armor plating with dent. Uh, again, this is simply to make them really stand out against anything else you can think of. And this will ensure that uh, there's no issues with... Um, people accidentally <laughs> <laughs> there's a chance that people are going to accidentally dig through and not realize it so we'll get those popped in there there we go now for the uh, intersection here I'll try to talk you through it but basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting in um, relays to monitor not only the intersection itself but also to monitor um the spines coming off of it, if you will. So as a train takes off down a particular route, be it going to sledge or heading down the line or going into the parkade, um, it's going to actually sense that train for an extended period of eight blocks. This is going to do two things. One, it's going to make sure that everything is clear so the next train can come through and not run into any problems. The other thing it's going to do is it's going to make sure there's enough delay time so that everything can reset. For those of you who haven't played with uh, Railcraft very much, uh, an issue, well, issue, a feature, <laughs> is that with uh, uh, routing switches or any kind of switches, as well as the train holding tracks, there is about a, a, a 20 tick or one second or two second delay um, between when the train finishes passing over that area and when it resets so if a train takes a turn from a switch once the train is completely finished and has passed the switch the switch will stay on there for another uh i think it's either 20 or 40 ticks and then it will reset to its common state and if you have trains waiting at the intersection and they go too soon that switch does not have enough time to reset and what happens is you end up having some train on train action <laughs> which is not <laughs> not desirable in the least Absolutely not. So that's one of the things we're trying to kind of avoid here. So I'm going to go ahead and do the spines here real quick. I'm not sure how, how Tox is uh, taking care of his business down there, but... I'm not sure either. I just uh, got confused <laughs> about what's three down and what's two down. <laughs> so you're going to have basically uh, the uh, armor plate 
then the relay, and then the road bed on top of that. But we're not putting the road bed in just yet. Okay. And the relay is, uh, yeah, here, here, here. This so armor plate, armor plate is, is three down, or relays build. are two down. Now, there are some exceptions to this because I just realized, ew. I've got this on a diagonal, which means this is actually going to go a little deeper. A so, diagonal like a hill kind of thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is where I was just having problems too. Yeah, all you, all you got to do is just... Uh, oh, I forgot my uh, uh, concrete. I forgot the concrete. Oh, yeah. Wee. <laughs> that's just not going to get old. <laughs> all right, so that's in there. That's good. And I'll pull this down. So anyway, so like I said, we're going to put the uh, wrong block down again. Because I'm good at that. Good heavens. So let's put the base down, put the relay down, and put the concrete over. And of course, I put the concrete over mine and realized I can't put that there yet. Because i got to link things. Hi! Um, so just so you guys know, when it comes to the uh, oh my god <laughs> input line... Uh, coming into the uh, intersection, there's actually, you'll see three relays I have. One down at the end and then two up here. The reason for that is this guy right here in the middle and the one back at the end actually is the sensor for letting the, re the roundabout know when trains are coming in. When trains come in, they'll actually trigger the roundabout to start its round-robin process. Normally, when trains aren't coming in, the round-robin won't be happening. And This is one... Aesthetically, want things flashing all the time, but two, it helps with server lag. You're not lighting track up constantly, so the roundabout will not run until a train comes into the intersection. So it's effectively a stop sign in the sense. So you are going to come up and stop for a brief moment while the roundabout cycles, and then it'll be able to take off again. Whereas on the exit ramps, <laughs> you just have to have monitor at that area, and that's about it. So pretty straightforward in that regard. The last little bit we're going to need to do here is we're going to need to. Uh, uh, do the actual relays for the uh, interior, the actual roundabout itself. I guess we'll have to put uh, futuristic armor plating on the bottom of that as well. Correct. And again, we're going to do it kind of a C shape because uh, um, if if a train doesn't know where to go, leave town. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> so in this particular case, for this intersection here, I'm going to be doing a C-shape facing north, because that's heading back out. This is effectively the end of the line. There's nothing else beyond this point unless we, for whatever reason, run trains down here and into the uh, water plant. Um, which, you know, come to think of it, Tox, we might even want to consider doing that. Just because yeah, it's a uh, good place to fill up on water for everybody. Hmm. That is a thought. We'll think about it. it. Might be something we add in later. So yeah. for the round for the roundabouts themselves, since nobody is going to be cutting from, for example, uh, from Sludge over to um, the Parkade, we don't need to have this connective track. So we're going to have a C-shaped track with the C opening facing north. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just basically trim this with uh, these relays. Now I'm going to be short relays here, so I'm going to, have to pull a few extra out of my bag. Just when you think you've got everything covered. You realize My bag's you're in short. resupply mode. Apparently, I've got no uh, relays at all. Good heavens. Luckily for us, the data center is right here. <laughs> That's handy. Relays. There we go. Let's grab a whole stack of them. Call it good. So. It gets so confusing looking at all these relays here. <laughs> it, 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 it can. It really, really can. Um, but he's got to kind of imagine we'll oh. see here. So I'm going to go ahead and dig out where we're going to put relays. So we have a C-section. We're going to pull out this one and this Excuse one. Excuse my cat. She's a, a bit needy right now. <laughs> cats, you got to love them. You've got cats, I've got kids. About the same thing, really. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, there we go. Shout this out. There we go. And then finally... Right here. Now, one thing we've learned when it comes to uh, relays is we need to basically block this entire circle here, this 5x5 five five circle, so that we can monitor if there's any trains in this circle. And again, if there's any trains on these exit 
lines eight blocks out it's all treated as one big block section the problem is we can't just put four relays in the corners and link them all together the reason for that is that they uh, cause an issue and they lock they either lock on or lock off they don't basically they can't be linked in a loop you can link multiple relays together however um, and so in doing that what we do basically is create a a, a, a full loop if you will um, but without actually connecting them together. So in this case, again, we're doing a C-section, so I'm going to lay these guys out, just like so. I'm hoping Tox is keeping up with me here. I, f I have a feeling I'm ahead of you. <laughs> okay. I don't know, maybe I missed a step. So I've laid these uh, relays out in a, in a circle around me. Again, we're not monitoring this little section right here, just because that's a C-section heading back out of town. Now we've got to yeah. get our trusty, dusty... Uh, but, well, what Tox refers to as the mailbox. <laughs> this is the single <laughs> block surveyor. And we're going to right link all these uh, relays together. Now, again, relay box can be linked to two different things. Oh, yeah, I can't link them together right now because there's no track there. I am yeah. so smart. Wow, I'm having a day. Okay, well, anyways, like I said, th these will actually link together here and then this point here, this point here, and so on. So we'll create a monitored loop for this roundabout uh, in this area. So that's all relay blocks down. The last bit we need to do is to go ahead and attach the red net cabling to them. So we're going to put red net cabling probably just right there. And then I just realized, Talk, we have to actually run cabling back a block. We have to get to uh, the rear here. My bad. I'll tell you guys, I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, red net laid down and run over to the um, uh, control box. And then once I've got them down and we get everything colored, we'll go ahead and come back and show you um, what the police system looks like before we lay down the road bed. That way you guys can see how things laid out. So we'll be uh, right back. Yeah, and I just realized I uh, missed like two relays. There's not even a hole for them. <laughs> Give us a minute, we shall return. <laughs> <laughs> we will. <laughs> All right, guys, we're back, and uh, we've uh, basically gotten everything kind of fitted in place here with the red net uh, cabling. Uh, Talks, explain to us this 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 craziness. Um, it's a bunch of red net cable, obviously. And there you go, folks. Thank you for watching. Have a good night. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> If you want a deeper explanation, um, we have uh, six, six colors for this uh, um, for this particular setup. Um, one of which is black, and black will be monitoring um, this. Yeah, the output as well as the circle. Um, as yeah, so the circle and the lines leaving the circle, and we have a red over here, and we have a red uh, connection on each of the relays that are monitoring the input so that way it knows that there is a train um, waiting to enter the circle. And again just as a reminder the reason why we have that input sensor is so that the roundabout isn't constantly cycling and killing the server just for the hell of it. It has to wait till the train is there before it starts cycling. Yeah. It, it, it's all well and fine to have one of them doing that until you have you know, roundabout here, here, forestry, down here, down there. Next thing you know, you got 20 roundabouts and they're all cycling. That would just murder a server. Plus all the round robins. Yes. <laughs> um, and then we have uh, the four colors on the outside. Are, they're just the first four colors of Minecraft. Uh, where does it start? Orange, magenta, light blue, and yellow. And, uh, um, and those, those are the... Those are the input holding tracks, so eventually there's going to be a holding track on top of that. So only one of those will be will be on at a time to let a train enter the roundabout. Hence the round-robin effect. Yes. And now we're going to now, go through and program all this, and it's going to take yes. forever. Oh, yeah. We would have uh, six pages. Let's see how much we can fit in there. Well, it should be pretty easy if we fly over to my... Pseudo office. We you missed. <laughs> <laughs> I've put this chest here. Um, these are some of the uh, uh, these are PRC cards on the top here. Um, I'll grab the one that says roundabout on it, and I'll also grab the book and quill that I have 
directly below it. Uh, that contains the documentation for this. I am getting eight frames per second. Sorry, viewers. Um, come on, come down. There we go. Oh, hey, BDA's over here. Somewhere. There he is. <laughs> yep, there he is. Not entirely sure what he's doing, but it's okay. Um, so if I come over to the, uh, the Rednet controller that is hooked up to all of this madness, take this, uh, PRC card. Um, you'll notice this PRC card... Pick up. Um, is, a uh, shiny as if it's enchanted. And that means that it is, uh... Oh. <laughs> I'm right-clicking to get into my inventory. That means that it's programmed with circuits. Um, so if I were to right-click on the Rednet controller, all the circuits are now in are now in here. Four pages worth. Now all this stuff is just the logic we needed to make this little roundabout work, and it's a simple, yeah, simple elements like uh, we needed a timer for the roundabout process, and then there's the input sensors, the output sensors, and so on. Um, I'm going through and click on each page here so you can see it. That way, if you want to copy this logic, you can just hit pause on the video, and you can see all the logic we put into it. We've explained what all the colors do here. Um, yeah. So you should have so everything. Book. You should have everything basically laid out for you in easy details. If you want to copy this design, there you go. There's a picture from the top. <laughs> There's the colors, and then you <laughs> saw the pages for it. Um, that's pretty much it. The last thing we need to do now is just go ahead and pave everything over, get all the uh, relays linked, and then get the uh, rails and the switches put down and do a little cosmetic work. So we're going to go ahead and take care of that, and we'll come back in. We'll show you the finished running uh, product, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So we'll be uh, right back. Hopefully it'll go good. <laughs> Hopefully. Be right back. And welcome back, folks. We are finally done. Uh, this took a lot longer than I anticipated. And a lot longer. <laughs> a little more frustration than I anticipated. Um, we got everything paired and done, as we talked about before. We got the roundabout. All the relays under here are taken care of. So they monitor this loop as well as eight blocks out in every direction from the outputs. Again, this is so that everything can reset before the next train is entered into the, uh, the roundabout. Uh, we took down the, min the craziness that's here. We still have a little more cleanup to do over here, which we'll get around to. Um, but everything's all set up now so trains can take off every direction. Uh, likewise, uh, this one over here, same deal. Talks about everything finished up on it. And one thing I wanted to show you real quick here is there's a little bit of a cheat to the system. You have this redneck cable, as you can see, is directly connected to this um, brownstone. The reason for that is the brownstone is uh, an unknown entity, and uh, therefore the redneck cable doesn't know what to do with it, so it treats it like a like a lamp or something that needs to uh, send power into. In redstone terminology, if you understand redstone, this would be what you would call a strong signal as opposed to a weak signal. So instead of this cable emitting the redstone signal, it's actually making this block act as a redstone source. So um, that basically is how that's all set up. That's how we did that. Just, again, to keep it clean, make it look nice, so we can still action this uh, holding track without any issues and still make it look pretty, not show anything. So that is it. That is all of it. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start the systems up. All our trains are sitting there waiting for us this entire time. So uh, Mr. Railmaster, would you like to do the honors? Oh, right. I won't uh, stand in front of the train when I do that, though. Probably for the best. Likely. So How much water do I have? Now, this guy should be going all the way down to the uh, parkade. Slowly. Uh, will it work? Wait for it. Yay! <laughs> of course, meanwhile, back here we've got other trains coming in. Hopefully. Yep, our little power train. Our little power train is down here waiting. So again, the roundabout, the only, the only kind of flaw to the system Whoops. is that... Uh-oh. Oh. What happened here? Interesting. The only flaw <laughs> to the system is that um, the roundabout doesn't know... 
what train is waiting where. So it just starts the round about the, the round robin cycle. So if it's, you know, over here on this line here, and it starts over here, it's going to have to wait for the entire cycle to go. Not the most idyllic situation, to say the least. Now, this is, this is us still working on some details. Uh, Tox is trying to do a, um, a little bit of uh, coding trickery, if you will, so that the this particular switch would only action um, if it was not a, um, uh, a power train. And unfortunately, it seemed to have gotten a little confused there. However, this one does understand this is a power train, so the power train just got to take a little extra detour. Not the end of the world. We'll get that sorted out, no problem. But for now, I just want to make sure the rest of these guys get moving where they should. You can see this is our sledge train that should go wrap all the way around and then head up that spine to the west here. Yeah. And the train coming in next, uh, I don't think you guys have seen that uh, yet. This is uh, one of our new trains. This is picking up materials from bees. Ah, yes, the bee train. It's a rather unflattering color, but, you know. Yeah. So this guy, again, should be going down to the parkade. So these routing switches are set up so that they have, basically, they're monitoring color, uh, primary color. The primary color, as I talked about before, are set up to have defined purpose so that they have the, uh, I believe, two different shades of green for item yep. pickup and drop off. And then you have uh, white for power, black for sludge, uh, those kind well, of things. The uh, the item pickup is actually yellow. Oh, ah, okay. My my I don't mistake. Have anything on dark green. Um, dark green is forestry though. All right, well, so that guy's unloading. We got another guy coming out of the parkade here for you. Oh, excellent. Well, we actually have another one coming into the uh, circle down here as well. Oh, nice. This so little guy is a. Uh, so yeah. Oh. What's that bright yellow? What's he coming for? Tin can. Apparently they're out of tin cans. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> excellent. Yeah, and that was sent by a system that uh, we still have yet to show you. Ah, uh, that's right. Maybe our next episode we'll be able to uh, go ahead and do a uh, recording on that. We've actually got a refined system. So now Bees actually has three different items that it will request and send out a train for. So... I would say, Tox, uh, we just need to get the uh, uh, the, the details for power the white. Oddity. Yeah, the power already fixed. That's, just, that's the only reason we have an issue with that, because that's delving into some new terminology in, in the uh, uh, routing table we have to kind of figure out. But that should not be a problem. For now, folks, I believe we can call this a win, Tox. I'd say so. Everybody's nice and... Flowy now going to places they need to go. Uh, as always, people, we certainly do enjoy, do enjoy doing this stuff. We do enjoy getting a chance to uh, show this stuff off to you. Um, we always appreciate uh, comments and input. And you can certainly uh, leave those comments down below if you like. Or even better yet, you can head over to the BottleRocketGaming.com website and get signed up on there. Everybody's welcome to sign up on the web forums, and that way you can actually have a dynamic conversation, talk in the forums and the groups, uh, give input and ask questions, and we can actually talk to you. We're a little more active in that regard. Um, so I definitely recommend that. And of course, uh, we certainly do appreciate the likes. The likes certainly do help us out. Um, so just hit the little button down there if you like the episode, and uh, everybody be happy. <laughs> uh, well, this, is, this, was a, this was a doozy talks. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Again, thank you so much. Uh, I I think I'm going to go cry now. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, got any plans after this, Tox? Eat. I agree. I so we're going to go eat. I'm Jester. Yep. I'm Toxic. And we're going to go eat food. Yes, we are. Bye! Bye. Bye. <laughs>